This is what we mean by a MOT stack or MOT stack. And as you can see in the drawing, we have now two units base to base. One on top and one exactly like the other one on the bottom. We now end up with the grounded terminals all grounded and connected together. We have now two active terminals poking out on, on this end. Two 40 volt terminals are here. The circuit diagram shows what we're talking about. The coils, as you can see, there. these ones are now connected together because if you angle grind the base and bolt them together, ensure with a resistance meter, just check and make sure that from the pins, pin to pin, at the back of the uh, other end of the high voltage terminal, you've got a uh, You've got no resistance. You've got a nice connection between both cores as well. And usually because they're coated with shellac or some sort of enamel, it's probably a very good idea to, to angle grind it and make it smooth when we connect it. That way we connect it as though it's one single unit. The cores are now connected together, you see, and so are the coils. And so now we have the 240 volts as we said before, they're polarized. You just reverse the winding so that you get a uh, 180 degree out of phase effect. So that when this one's at 2800 volts, say, the other one will be at minus 2800 volts, just like in the diagram. The exact opposite. So that way they'll spark and jump into each other, and you'll end up with a combined voltage of 5600 volts. Terminal to terminal. So now we have like a dual like a, an opera, a unit that operates like a single 5600 volt transformer. You can imagine we can keep doing this. We can get another two of these, right? Do the same again. And we end up with two MOT stacks. So instead of 5600, we'll end up with uh, 11,200 if we wanted to. And we can keep going, of course. Bearing in mind the uh, voltage load that's on the um, on the cores, if we keep it, we keep the operation like this. We keep the uh, voltage at a minimum. See, every every three or an unbalanced set of units will produce a higher voltage slightly. If in doubt, fill the uh, container that these are placed in with oil with mineral oil, but the amount of voltage that's on the core as opposed to on the outside is a total of about 2,000 volts and this is well insulated for that. It should be able, should be enough. Next we're going to switch the unit on and I'm hoping you'll be able to see it so I'm going to just adjust the video so that we can center in on the, uh, on the meters there. Okay, and, we're, and we'll switch it on. Okay, I'm hoping we can see that clearly. You can see the needle has moved. The current, the current meter reads 2.58, nearly 2.6 amps. This is unloaded. The voltage meter reads 9,300 volts. And see the the meter and where the needle is. It's reading 9,300 9, volts. Full scale deflection is 10,000. Uh, so that's 2.58 to 2.59, almost 2.6 amps. And that's with the uh, core on this current limiter all the way in. Okay. Now I'm going to dim the lights probably won't see the meters anymore. I'll call it out as I draw the core out and I'll demonstrate the arcs.
Okay, so we'll adjust the angle of the uh, of the camera again so that we can get a good view of that. Okay, I've adjusted the uh, camera angle. Hopefully, we're going to be getting a good shot of the sparks and the arcs from there. I'll just have to remember that length of the arcs and to try and make sure that they remain remain in the footage. Okay, this is going to be at two. This is at two point six amps unloaded. When we load it, pull it out. We're talking roughly about 10 amps, that's 2,400 uh, VA, you can go all the way up to 12 amps, 2,800 VA. Okay, now uh, shorting it on the case, hopefully we can see the size of the, the, uh, the arcs at 5,000 volts, or roughly... be like 4,650 uh, volts to be exact, because the total volt is 9,300, the current will be six, 619 milliamps uh, when we're drawing it at 12 amps. Okay, now on the high voltage side, at uh, 9,300 volts, I'm hoping to pick up the sparks. This is the what I'm hoping that we can pick up. Because of the arc, we've got this massive current surge, uh, creates this flame that you 
C, ionizes the air, and then you get these, uh, and then the, the sparks get here too, and you see inside that current, inside that flame, you see, and you can hear the, you hear the crackling, that crackling sound is the sparks, it doesn't come out on the footage. I'm hoping it comes down on the footage, because it's quite spectacular. The sparks are, are very, very long. The arcs are long. Quite impressive. Look at that. But the sparks, the sparks are quite spectacular. Sparks that are jumping in that arc, also extremely long, and they're easily three to four inches. Quite amazing. Okay, we increase the current once again. This time, we'll increase we'll increase the uh, voltage till we get an even ten thousand volts. even 10,000 volts. I'm hoping that comes out on the meter, that picks up the meter. And we're talking about, we're talking the current roughly about 3.8. Uh, or 3.9 amps. Okay, when we, when we, uh, I just want to see that. 18, 18 to 21 amps. So on the, on the slower side, 18 amps, we're talking 4,300 VA plus, okay, voltage is 10,000 volts now, the current will now be about 432 milliamps, so on the 5,000 volt side you're going to get nearly 1 amp. Let's have a look at the size of the, the arcs, coming out into the case, look at that, they're almost, they're like a, almost a 30, 30 centimetre, 30 centimetre arc, That's, that is extremely spectacular, look at that, look at the... 30, 30 centimetre spectacular flames. That's that is amazing. That's all nearly one amp. Very dangerous. Okay. The sparks. Of course, now the arcs are overwhelming. even on the high voltage end. Even at 430 milliamps. Look at that. And you can see sparks are like six inches long than that. Occasional spark jumps in the midst of that. we're drawing is roughly the amount of power that we'll be drawing out of one MOT okay but they're shared among four this time so the amount of heat that's uh, created here is distributed among the four this can be run for uh, for short periods of time not an extensively long period of time but if you want to run it for a longer period of time you're going to have to definitely put the units in oil so that you get good heat distribution probably put uh, heat sinks on it but, uh, but as, as these units seem to outlast on their own and unloaded, mind you, they're not loaded to the extent that we're loading them, but they seem to outlast the microwaves. They're heavy duty. And for short, for short periods of time, there's no, no will effects, no damage, the, uh, and no extreme heating if we, if, we, if we share the load. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the presentation and the spectacular arcing. Okay, thanks for watching.